Hey everyone, today we'll be talking about the final exercise for this project and this whole series. In this exercise you're expected to implement the backend part for this dashboard. We've built out the other pages already to manage categories, transactions, we've added user authentication, registration, file uploads and many more things. Basically we've covered pretty much all the necessary topics you need to build the backend for this dashboard. Before we dive into the specifics of this exercise, let's go through some of the updates I've made behind the scenes. First of all, I've updated the PHP version to 8.2, so in the Docker file you will see PHP 8.2-FPM. Just make sure to update the PHP version on your end if you're following along. Another thing that I updated is the Node version in here, so this was before 16 and now it's set to 18. Next thing I did is that I fixed this navigation menu bar in here. So if we go to transactions page, you see that transactions in the navigation is highlighted before the overview was always being highlighted regardless of which page you went to. So if I go to categories, now categories is highlighted and back to dashboard overview is highlighted. The fix for this was actually pretty simple and that's why I didn't cover it in the video, I did it behind the scenes, but I'm just going to show you how I did it. So if I open the web.php, the first thing that I did was I had to name these routes. So we added a name to the dashboard route called home. We also added the name to the categories route called categories and same thing for the transactions. Then in our layout template, we're checking if the current route name is equal to home and only then we are setting it to active. And we're doing the same check for other pages as well. Here we're checking if it's transactions and here we're checking if it's categories. Now the way we get the current route is that we're passing this globally to twig templates. So if I search for that current route, we see that I added that within the auth middleware, but you could create a brand new middleware if you wanted to. It's just it made sense to edit in here since we're passing auth related stuff globally here as well. So we're passing the current route from here. We get the route and its name from the route context using the request object. And that's about it. Let's now go over the exercise and what you need to implement on your own. As you saw before, I'm providing you with this dashboard UI. We have the nice chart here which is provided by one of the popular JavaScript libraries called chart.js. It's all configured for you so all you need to do is basically just build the backend part of it to fetch the data properly. Currently these numbers are hard coded. We have you know hard coded 2200 as expense, 3000 as income and then 800 as net. And then we have this data hard coded as well. So let's go over the code. First we have the new chart.js library added to the package JSON right here. Then let's open the dashboard JavaScript file and in here we're making a get request to the stats slash year to date endpoint which essentially fetches the data for the chart. It expects both income and expense to be present in the JSON response with the month number being the key. So January would be 1, February would be 2 and so on. We are then initializing the empty array for all the 12 months in here. And in here, month count starts from zero, so January would be zero, February one, and so on. And that's why we have this M minus one in here to basically add the income and expense to the proper month. Then we are initializing the chart right here, and we are setting the labels and passing the data to the data sets. Then in our dashboard twig template, it will notice a few changes. We're displaying the current month and year in here. We're getting the expense income and net from the totals array and formatting that as number. Then we have a section for the year to date chart right here. Then on the right side, we have the recent transactions, which basically just loops through the transactions array and it expects that transaction is a transaction entity and then displays recent transactions. So it has the description, amount, category, and date. Then on the bottom, we have the top spending categories. So we are looping through these top spending categories and we're displaying its name and total. Now controller methods along with the service methods are already created for you, they just return placeholder and hardcoded data. 
So if we open the home controller here, we have within the index method these three variables. So basically three method calls, one to get the totals, one to get the recent transactions, and one to get the top spending categories. And then we're passing them to the dashboard to the template. We also have the get year to date statistics method, which calls get monthly summary on the transaction service and returns that as JSON. Now, if we inspect these individual methods, you will see that these are hard coded and this is basically what you need to implement. So you're expected to basically implement this on your own and return the data in this same format. Then we have the get recent transactions method here currently returns an empty array, but this again needs to return list of most recent transaction entities. Then we have get monthly summary method and in here again we are returning hard coded data and you're expected to implement this on your own to return the proper monthly summary in this exact format. The M here as I mentioned is the month digit so 3 means March, 4 means April, 5 means May and so on. So basically this is the main part of this exercise where you have to fill these methods in and instead of returning the hard coded data you would be returning the actual real data based on the database records in the given formats. You will need to write doctrine worm queries either in DQL format or uh, use query builder or just write raw SQL. It is up to you how you want to get that data. As you can see, these methods already have parameters defined, but you're free to modify them as you need. For example, in the getTotals method, we have start date and end dates, and basically your query needs to fetch the data between these dates. Then in the get recent transactions, we have the limit, so basically you need to make sure that you're selecting only this many recent transactions. Then in the get monthly summary, we have year and your query needs to aggregate the data only for the given year. Make sure to pay attention to clockwork to avoid M plus one problems. And also, as I mentioned before, make sure to follow the same format when returning data. Otherwise, the front end is going to break. If you do decide to make changes to the structure or the format, then you would need to also adjust the front end on your own. Now there's one more method that you will need to implement and that is within the category service called get top spending categories. This accepts limit as an argument and this basically just returns this many top spending categories. So wherever we're calling this from, we are setting it to four. So we are expecting four top most spending categories. All right, so that's part one of the exercise. You basically are expected to fill in those methods. There is also part two of the exercise and that is to populate the transactions table with maybe 100,000 rows or even a million uh, rows and load the dashboard page and see if it takes long time to load. If it does, then maybe introduce caching. We covered Redis, so you should be able to cache some of the data to practice your skills, especially the data for the chart. So essentially you have two parts to this exercise that you need to complete. There is also a bonus part to this exercise if you feel adventurous and want to try some things and practice even more. As part of that part 3 or the bonus exercise, you should add your own touch to this application. What I mean by that is, for example, as you can see here, this July 2023 and then 2023 year here are sort of uh, hard-coded to the current month and year. If we go back to the code, we see that right here. So the end date is always the current date and the start date in here is the beginning of the month. If we scroll down to the year statistics, we see that we're passing the current year by default. Now, ideally, this would be coming from the front end. So maybe you would have a date picker or the year picker and so on. And then you would fetch the data based on whatever date was selected by the user. Now, that is not a simple thing to implement. And as I said, it's bonus. So you don't have to worry about it unless you want to uh, practice more and try new things. So overall, for part one and part two, you should be able to implement them on your own. You will need to Google things and get out of your comfort zone and get your hands basically dirty. Some things may be new, which we may not have covered about doctrine, and that is part of the learning process. I want you to go out in the wild and Google things and try to figure things out on your own. That is a skill that you'll need in any job. You'll be expected to figure things out on your own, and not every detail will be provided to you. So I basically want you to try it. 
Now, before we wrap this up, I did add a new dependency to our project to make it a little bit easier for you and give you a hint. It's called Doctrine Extensions. In DQL, you won't be able to use all of MySQL functions that you might need to aggregate things. This package basically provides extensions that add certain functions. You just need to register the proper extensions in container bindings. You can check the list of available functions in the documentation here, and to enable them, you can check container bindings. So if we open the container bindings, I've added three functions for you, which should be available, but if you need more, you can enable them on your own. So if we scroll up here, where we're registering the entity manager interface, we see that we are adding three new extensions to our ORM config. And the first one is the year, second one is month, and the third one is date format. So you would be able to use year function, month function, and date format function pretty much the same way you would use in MySQL. But instead, you would be using that within the QL. All right, so this is it for this video. I will provide the solution to part one of this exercise within the P37 underscore and branch. But please only look at that solution after you've tried it on your own. Part two is entirely on you and should be fairly simple to add. You can submit the PR in the Expanis repository if you want me to review your solution. I can't promise that I'll be able to review it in detail, but I can skim through it and give you some feedback. Thank you so much for watching. Please hit the like button if you enjoyed the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. Until next time, happy coding.